QuickBooks Online 2024 Accounts Receivable Aging Reports. Get ready and some trail mix because we're hiking on QuickBooks Online, our audit trail to success. Here we are online in our browser looking for a QuickBooks Online test drive. Choosing the result that has Intuit.com and the URL Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. Selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Opening up our major financial statement reports like we do every time. Reports on the left hand side. In the favorites, we're going to be right clicking on the balance sheet, open link in new tab. Right click on the profit and loss, open link in new tab. Let's go to that middle tab, close up the hamburger and do a range change. Bringing it back to 2023, 010123 tab, 123 tab. Run it to refresh it. We'll go to the tab to the right, close up the hamburger, and change the range once again. 010123 tab, 123123 tab. That's the setup process that we do every time. These are the two major financial statement reports, the balance sheet, the income statement, otherwise known as the profit and loss. We're now looking at other reports, most other reports, giving more information about one or multiple line items on one of these two major financial statement reports. This time we're looking basically at the balance sheet line item of accounts receivable. And the accounts receivable account is special in that it's tied to the customer. So this represents money that is owed to us. If I drill down on it, we do get a more detailed report, the transaction detail, basically a general ledger. But this is just giving us the information by date. We also need the information by who owes us the money because we want to be collecting on it. So let's go back and see that report. We're going to go back to the first tab here into our reports on the left hand side and scroll down to the section of who owes you money. These are the reports specifically kind of designed around the accounts receivable. We took a brief look at some of them in a prior presentation uh, in the reports overview section. We got the accounts receivable aging detail, the accounts receivable aging summary. Those are the main two reports that would probably, that would be used to be tracking uh, the accounts receivable in addition to tracking the receivables internally in what I would call the customer center. And then we've got the uh, collections report. We've got the customer balance detail. This would be the most classic or uh, basic type of subsidiary report structure in a detailed format versus the summary format. And then we could have the invoices, which are basically the open invoices, which you would still think would be the balance uh, that is outstanding. Invoices and receipts, those are going to give us more detail about the two forms that are increasing and decreasing accounts receivable. The open invoices, invoices increase the receivables. If they have not been paid, then that would be tying in to the receivable. And then statement list terms, unbilled charges. These two have to do with charges that we have uh, made that we want to charge the customer for in the form of time that has been entered and expenses that we need to make an invoice for. So let's look at the most basic report first. Let's look at the customer balance summary. So I'm gonna right click on it and open link in a new tab. And if we check this one out, I'm gonna close up the hamburger and uh, the we'll, it's at uh, let's let's say let's go to the date range up top and say we want a, a custom range as of twelve thirty one two three. Now notice that this is a balance sheet report that is still reporting as of a point in time, and this one only has that one date field to do an entry into because it's only that one point in time. And you can see here it just gives us our our customers and the amount that uh, they owe us. And if I go to the bottom of this report, we're at the 528152. That amount should tie out to what's on the balance sheet. If I go to the balance sheet over here, we're at the 528152. So that's just the most standard basic kind of subsidiary report giving us more information which should tie out to the parent account, in this case on the balance sheet accounts receivable. However, you probably don't use this report as much because you're gonna track the stuff that people owe you internally. So if I go to the first tab and I go to my reports, 
uh, I'm sorry, if I go to my sales area <laughs> and then I and then I go into the all sales, then in here we can we can sort our our uh, overdue invoices and our open invoices and so on. So we have our invoices here. I'm going to close this back out. And if I go into uh, if I've got my invoices, it even gives us like a total down below. But this total you, you might the total is really what you might want the subsidiary report for and then we have the invoices tab over here where i can do a similar process we have the overdue we've got the uh not due and i can also look at it this way with the status these are the unpaid invoices and if i scroll down doesn't give us the total on this report but when we're tracking them internally, this is where we might go. And then, of course, we have the customer tab, which we're, where we can also track them. And we might sort it by 20 open invoices here. And now we can see, you know, the open uh, invoices. So, so that's why this report is the classic subledger, but we might not use it as much because we're kind of looking at those internal tools to help collect on the reports. But it's important to note that this number should tie out to the balance sheet uh, number here. Okay, and it pretty much always will, by the way, because when we do a journal entry into accounts receivable, QuickBooks forces us to add a customer so that it can create the 